Welcome back to Ox Tools. I'm Tom. So, um, this particular Meatloaf 29 is running a little late. Um, this last weekend was the, the big open house here. So, we had a bunch of people over and about 25 or maybe even a couple more um, of the local uh, viewers, the local oxen around here, uh, showed up and then wandered through the shop and we chatted for literally for hours. So, uh, uh, it was a nice visit and I met some nice folks. Um, most of them were pretty shy so uh, I couldn't get them on camera. So, uh, But we got a couple of characters for you that we're going to show on tape. Um, so we did that and um, I got some uh, tool purchases that we're going to check out and a couple boxes showed up. We're also going to pick up on this uh, x-ray plug for Nick, uh, the energy fabricator down in Australia. Um, Mr. Chris Stevens uh, in the UK correctly identified uh, this mystery thread as a 3 quarter 26 uh, BSB, which is British Standard Brass, I believe. Um, and we were going back and forth uh, trying to figure out what it was. Well, it turns out that it's a Whitworth thread, which is uh, interesting for me since I've never actually cut a Whitworth thread. I've encountered fasteners, but I've never actually had the occasion to cut one. So we're going to grind a tool, and uh, we're going to make uh, we're going to make this plug, and uh, we'll do this uh, 26 thread per inch uh, Whitworth thread. Um, I don't know, and I might have something else I throw in there too. So let's get an apron on, and uh, let's get suited up, and let's get to it. Okay, so let's <clears throat> let's take a look at the first uh, first item here. Um, I didn't go to the I didn't go to the flea market. This last weekend, but I went. I went to a little estate sale. Um, we were having lunch, and we drove by, and we saw a sign. Um, so we stopped in real quick. <laughs> I almost got towed. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, I picked this up here. It's a Dremel Moto tool. Um, I have a couple of these now. Uh, this one doesn't look like it's seen any use, um, and it has. Um, this kind of pin chuck here, which I don't have on my other ones. The other ones have a collet set up. So this one can go down and uh, grab a small drill or, or grab something with a little bit bigger than an eighth inch shank. So uh, this was appealing. So uh, anyway, that's the only thing I found there. Um, and a brand new pair of, uh, of uh, little vice grips here, these five WRs. Um, anyway, 10 bucks for both of those. So that was a pretty good, uh, Pretty good deal, uh, worth the stop. I mean, we just pulled over to the side and ran in there and buzzed through real quick. Anyway. Okay, next one here comes from our buddy Stan, um, Shaden HKW, who's uh, turning into a production shop, grinding out these, uh, these little uh, trick little speed squares, or these Z squares, as he calls them. He's got a little Z stamped in it. And um, hey, hey, Stan, you need to stamp these a little deeper if you're going to grind them, okay? Now, he sent me these, uh, and uh, these are supposed to fit in a Kurt Vice, uh, but Stan, I'm afraid they don't. When you put them vertical like this, uh, the leg hits, and I'll show you guys that in a minute. Um, so they need to be an RCH uh, shorter here uh, to sit in a, uh, in a Kurt Vice. And I have some brand new jaws on mine uh, now. I just got some. Um, and so they're the correct height. They're the factory height. They're not short uh, from being reground. So we'll take a look at that in just a second. All right, Stan. So these are, like I said, I just bought some brand new, uh, uh, some brand new jaws. You see that? So they clear in the middle, but they catch there. It isn't much. Let me get a measurement from here to here, and uh, that way you can uh, you can adjust the size of these things and uh, accommodate that. Okay, so uh, these are brand new Kurt jaws. Just ordered them, uh, 1.7345. So uh, you need to be shorter than that uh, on this vertical leg here. For that to clear. Now I can, it's fine, I can use them this way, there's no problem there, but that isn't 
Well, it's probably reasonably useful in that direction too. So, uh, but uh, I think I'm just going to go take them on the belt sander and, uh, and and knock that tip off of there. <laughs> Stan. Okay, next one uh, comes from uh, my buddy Adam, and uh, I guess we're having a, uh, a seafood boil here pretty soon. And uh, he says this is his uh, favorite uh, uh, seafood boil. We're gonna try this out. I talked to some guys at work, and um, one of them's got a big pot, and the other's got a burner. And so I'm gonna pick up some shrimp and uh, some other goodies and potatoes and corn and stuff, and uh, we're gonna try out this uh, seafood boil, see how that goes. Uh, that ought to be fun. Um, and then uh, he sent back, this is uh, <clears throat> my friend Marty's uh, shaft for his portable sawmill, uh, which Adam built up here. Uh, it looks wonderful. Adam did a, a pro job on it there. And uh, you can see that um, uh, the seal surface and then the bearing surface there. Uh, interesting, you can see the transition here between the two materials right in this corner. It's pretty cool. Um, and uh, Adam, thank you very much for doing that. And uh, I'll try to get Uncle Marty on camera here uh, when he comes to pick this sucker up. And uh, we're not going to let him uh, weasel out on us and uh, be anonymous, okay? So thanks for doing that. And then uh, I'll see if I can get some pictures of this uh, sawmill and some of this wood that, uh, that Marty cuts with the, uh, his portable sawmill there. So, all right, so that's that. And then we got some, uh, some doink material here. Now this is ductile iron here, uh, this is cast iron. And um, Adam and I have been talking a little bit, look at this, guys, Adam's a real professional. He cut these off and then he sanded the corners and deburred them, man, what a guy. Thanks, Adam. Um, anyway, I'm gonna make some um, cast iron one, two, three blocks. And um, cast iron's kind of an interesting material in, uh, um, in particular around the welding bench is that spatter doesn't stick to it, okay? Um, the other neat thing about cast iron is if you make stuff that goes on a permanent magnet chuck, like a surface grinder or something like that, uh, it clamps well but releases completely without any residual magnetism. So um, if you want to make a, uh, a, uh, a wheel dressing thing with a diamond, uh, cast iron base is real nice because you can release it, boom, and it comes free and it's smooth and it doesn't drag coming off. Um, or if you want to make, you know, appliances for uh, uh, that will be around uh, magnets. Anyway, uh, oh look at that man! I should get my micrometer out and measure those because they're just like right there. Anyway, those are going to become some uh, some little one, two, three blocks for the welding table. All right, and yep, I think that's it. And um, um, see what else we got. Almost forgot about this. Um, this popped up on Craigslist the other day, and after a flurry of emails with the uh, the guy that had it, uh, I finally got a hold of him. And um, it was right on my on my normal route to work, so uh, it was kind of convenient to go by. Anyway, it's just a Kennedy uh, Kennedy rollaway. It's a model 277, and um, which I think is a I can't remember how wide these. <clears throat> so this is uh, 27 inches wide. They make a slightly larger one, a 29, I think. And uh, uh, but this is all drawers, which is kind of nice. And I have a plan here uh, for this um, as well. Um, anyway, the guy just wanted to get rid of it. It's in his way, and uh, uh, so I picked it up uh, for the oddball price of 77 dollars. Um, why he didn't ask for 80 or 100 or or 50 or whatever, I have no idea. Um, it still locks, the wheels are fine, and it's not, uh, uh, it's got a little bit of rust here and there, but nothing serious. Anyway, that was a Craigslist find, so uh, keep your eyes peeled. Action. Hi, I'm John. Welcome back to Ox Tools for another exciting episode. We got a, our, our standard do list here, and we're going to cover most of this in a 20 minute episode. It's just going to be fabulous. <laughs> so let's go get our, our work clothes on, get suited up, and uh, we'll get started. All right. Good job. Good job. Okay, so after horsing around a little bit, we finally figured out what this thread is for this x-ray plug. 
Um, so it turns out that it's a, it's a Whitworth uh, form, which is 55 degrees, uh, which this is not. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, this is the one we're going to cut here. It's a three-quarter uh, BSB, uh, British Standard Brass, I believe is what it is. And um, so we have to remake our little the, our starting um, plug uh, in a minute. But I want, we're going to grind a thread tool first. So we're going to grind a thread tool for our our Whitworth form here. So um, now this is a standard uh, stare at uh, 60 degree. Uh, um, some people call these arrows or whatever darts uh, for grinding tools. You can grind a a threading tool and then you can check the uh, uh, the angles and uh, you can also use this in the in the machine to help set you help set the tool up well that's 60 degrees that doesn't that doesn't work for this job we need 55 degrees it's got an included angle of 55 degrees um, so I actually I ordered one uh, off eBay but in the interim I have this um, we can use these this happens to have 55 degrees. That's 60, 55, 50. So it's five degree steps, basically, is what uh, what we have. All right, so I'm going to pull this 55 out there. And, and uh, so we're going to use this, and, and I'm going to change the camera around uh, to do it here. Uh, that's some old threading tool there. But we're going to do it on this fresh end here, and we're going to mark this off, uh, grind this, and then... Uh, um, um, get this ready to go for threading. So we have all our tools ready for this <laughs> the Australian x-ray plug from hell. So <laughs> Anyway, uh, let me change the camera. Okay, so we're just gonna go ahead and mark this off and You know a lot of times I'll just put it in the vise like this just to kind of help hold on to it and then what it does is it gives me a uh, Kind of a little shelf to lay that on uh, In fact, let me just lower that it's just it's a whisker like so it gives me a little shelf to help kind of support that too. So we're grinding a tool and we're and we're coming up to a shoulder in this direction. So really what we want to happen here is we'd really like the point of the tool to be over here like that. Instead of grinding it on center line, we're going to we're going to push it over a little bit so that we can get up close to our shoulder. Now the thread depth is pretty shallow, so we don't need let me get rid of that. We don't need a lot of point, so uh, this will uh, allow us to sneak up closer to the shoulder here. So, really, what we'll, you see, if I put it in the center, if the shoulder's here, you know, I have that uh, that offset that I have to deal with. So, really, what I want is something like that. Okay. So let's uh, kind of just set this over here, and yeah, I'm just you know eyeballing this kind of square with the world. And once we start grinding the tool, uh, to correct those positional things is actually a pretty simple, pretty simple thing. All right, that kind of looks good. So this is just a carbide scriber, and I'm going to scribe right on this, right on this this uh, high speed tool here. Actually, yeah, uh, I think I am. Oh, and I don't know if I, I didn't mention it, but uh, um, yeah, okay, that'll work. The relief of this tool, you can already see the, the factory relief is under that edge, so we already pick up that uh, bonus relief. Okay, so let's go over to the grinder, and we'll take our little gauge with us, and uh, we'll do a little bit of tool grinding. Okay, so we're here at the bench grinder, um, and uh, let's just start uh, grinding this thing. i got my little water bucket here. I'm going to dress the wheel first. Nice cutting edge. All right. And that's almost all I need on that one side. I uh, probably won't even go back onto that one.
go for another little dress here. So I don't know how well the camera picked that up, but the sound changed, which uh, uh, is an indication of how the wheel is cutting. Um, so sound plays an important part in that. Okay, so we're real close here to coming up to a point. So I'm going to keep working this one side. I'll move over onto the fine wheel and then we'll go over on the diamond grinder to get a get the precision angle on there. So actually that's looking pretty good. Yeah, I think I'm gonna move over to the fine wheel, then I'll take you guys over to the uh, uh, so the diamond grinder. Anyway, that's that's all uh, that you need to see on the bench grinder. I'm just gonna touch this up on the fine wheel and then we'll go over there. All right, so we're over here in the diamond grinder, and um, this is how we came off of the uh, the fine wheel over there. Okay, and hopefully you guys can see that well enough. So I got a little land there that I'm going to take care of over here. So we're gonna we're gonna dust these off at the at the correct angles. So first we got to set the correct angles, and I got a little little protractor here, and um, we're gonna use our our little 55 degree angle gauge here to uh, to set that. Um, at least that's the theory anyway. Looks pretty good. Okay. So that'll give us the one side and then uh, and the other thing it does too is it establishes it um, in relation to the side of the tool so that I can just put it in the tool post straight, which is kind of nice Okay, so let's give that a little kiss and see what uh, see what we get Just touch that edge. The table's got a little relief in it, so it's probably about all we need right there. It's fully cleaned off. All right, so now I'll spin this around to the other side and, uh, and uh, do that other side. Don't want to do anything else? Okay, all right. Let me change the angle around and uh, we'll do the other side. Okay, this time I, I decided uh, I wanted to, to move this surface out a little bit to make it a little easier to, to um, set the angle. So I just put a parallel that spans across this, this grinding face here. And then I can, I can see a little bit better against the edge of the parallel, so, okay. Let's try that. Set that aside, put that in my pocket. Actually, you know what? That might. It might be kind of nice to stand that off a little bit. Yeah. Okay, looks like there's a little bit to come off on this uh, on this one. This will probably take a little while. Oop. Oh, I got a little bit of magnetism in that. 
Actually, you know, maybe I want a, a, a thicker parallel. I don't think that's going to buy me much. Actually, you know what? Duh. I'm going to go on the other side here. This, it, this, this is spinning this way, so that's kind of a nip point. I'm, it's bugging me a little bit, so I think I'm just going to reverse this and uh, and hop over on this other side. That's one nice thing about the diamond grinders is you can go either way, right? So uh, I don't have to be all crowded in that uh, in that corner there. All right, let's try this side. I don't want to grind my parallel, so... Yeah, almost. One more, I think. Okay, that's it. Both sides, and then we'll just do a little lapping on that nose radius, uh, and uh, we got a threading tool. Actually, uh, what I do? Oh, there it is. That's this is what we call PFG, and I'll uh, let you guys guess what uh, what that means. <laughs> okay, so the uh, the Whitworth form. Um, it has a radius, a nose radius, so, but it's actually very, very tiny, so especially with this particular pitch of thread. So it's really just a breaking of that edge is really more realistic. Uh, I think it's a five thousandths of an inch radius, so uh, um, basically I'm just going to, um, I'm just going to stroke this and bend it around the corner a little bit and I'm not using much pressure at all here and this is the fine side of this stone done Probably pretty close. I, I got well. I guess I could put it in the uh, little toolmaker's microscope and uh, and measure it, but I'm not gonna for this job. All right, I like that. Okay. Give it a little stroke on the side. Now this is the one I really want to be careful with because it's so sh it's so small. I don't have much to I don't have much to uh, to feel in, in. And 
this is probably not making good video. I just want to just smooth that a little bit. Yeah, okay, that's it. That's all I'm doing. Okay, so there's our Whitworth tool. And uh, so we'll get that set up in the lathe and um, make a new, uh, a new threading blank. And I think we got all the tools we need for this job now um, after horsing around with it a little bit. Action. Hey, welcome to Ox Tools. This is Ray, uh, Razorworks. And uh, I had to pull a funny one on Tom. And sure enough, I got him hook, line, and sinker. So all right. Hopefully you you owe me that video soon. too, so uh, I want a copy of that. So. <laughs> and Tom wants a copy, so <laughs> <All right. laughs> that'll be my homework. Very good, thanks, Ray. Okay, so we got our blank redone here, and we changed the diameter. It's now 750 instead of, uh, you know, I don't even remember what it was before now. Um, <clears throat> so, what we're going to do now, uh, I've calibrated all the tools, that's what the blue is about. Um, we're going to cut a thread relief back here uh, since we're coming up to a shoulder. So I'm just going to use a little uh, um, a little grooving tool here, and I'm just going to come in and put a little groove in there. Um, like so here, like that, and uh, and then we'll we'll prep the edges. Uh, we'll put a little chamfer on that, and then uh, see if we can reach in there and get a little chamfer on the back of the thread relief. Um, and then we'll go ahead and do our threading. So let me shift to that tool, which is number two. So let's see here. I remember how to do this. Tool, program, run, yes. Enter, tool number two, enter. Okay, let's verify that. So it should, I touch off. Yeah, it's reading that diameter. Okay, great. Um, so we're gonna go in about 60 thousandths um because that's just a whisker more than the uh than the thread depth so chamfer so let's see here um oh you know what that ch chamfer tool is not going to reach in might have to get a different chamfering tool When you, when you chamfer for a thread prep, um, you, want, you don't want to use the same angle as your thread, uh, your thread angle. You want to use something different or else you leave a, a wire edge. Um, since our tool is a 55 degree Whitworth, we can use this 60 degree uh, to create a little thread chamfer on the back of the relief. So let's just carefully. thread first. I got a little burr on that. Um, I'm going to thread first before I do the face groove. Uh, make sure the thread comes out good. Uh, uh, well, yeah. I don't know. Got the face groove set up. We're already in high speed. Heck, let's just do that first, okay? I think that's tool three. So that should read 
I'm just double checking. I don't use this uh, offset function that much. Okay, that looks right. And it should have been zeroed on that surface. Yes, okay, we look good. All right, so we want the inside edge at one inch. Right about there for our O-ring. And then double check your depth, Tom. <laughs> and uh, 101 to 107 deep. Okay. to get a pin and measure that and uh, and see if I got the groove right. Alright, so we got a pin now. Alright, pin's good. And let's see if Mr. O-ring does what he's supposed to do. Okay, so there's a, the ID is just enough to keep the O-ring in place and so that's your face seal and then the groove is rectangular so that when this compresses that rubber has a place or the, the elastomer has a place to go and uh, and in the groove so let's pluck that out of there uh, nicking it up okay and uh, I'll probably take a little paper on that and uh, just break that edge a little bit more but we'll do that later so let's set up for threading and uh, get a Whitworth thread on that. Okay, so I think we're ready here. We're just going to um, darken this up a little bit. Gearbox is set theoretically here. <laughs> so, uh, Get ready to go. I'm gonna back off of the part. There we go. This is just a scratch pass here. Okay. And I had my thread gauge. Okay, the dreaded 26 thread per inch kangaroo thread here. Backlighting that a little bit. It looks right. I just want to. Yeah, I don't think that's going to help me. Yeah, it looks right to me. So, okay, let's do a little, little threading, and we don't even have to use our little metric trick that we did. So. Uh, um, actually, what I do need, uh, I gotta think about that. So let me, uh, think about the, uh, oh, actually, you know what, I can just do it with the, uh, with the cross feed here. So the double depth of thread is around 50 thousandths, uh, of an inch, so I should have, uh, set my DRO instead of setting my DRO for the diet you know what I can still reset it that's what I'm gonna do I'm just gonna reset it because I'm gonna do a radial infeed instead of a compound infeed uh, that way I can just monitor the depth of thread uh, right off of the DRO so it's really easy that way 
um, and, um, and do it that way. Okay, so uh, let's do some threads. Fifteen on the first run here. Oh, you dumbass. <laughs> All right, well, you know what? That's okay. Doesn't matter because we can re we can recut that, so we're we're still okay. <laughs> we're still okay. My stuff. feed now. the last pass. have a thread gauge for this. Yeah, it's pretty good. I gotta rework this face since I bumped into it with the tool there. So what I'll do is I'll just face a little off of that and I'll move that shoulder. I'll move everything down a little bit and uh, reface that and recut that o-ring groove and uh, part this. Oh I want to drill a hole through it too so we'll do that. Um, yeah I don't know. I think that's it for threads. Um, Okay, so we're just going to rework that. I'm just going to move everything down about ten thousandths and see if that cleans up. Um, see if that cleans everything up. And then I'll just 
come back and face that 10 thousandths off. the sharpie doesn't write on uh, on oily stuff come on I can't cooperate Too bad. So, next thing I'm do is recut that uh, that face groove. We're gonna go in uh, another ten thousand. Say that was tool. What did I call that one? Three. Yep, tool three. All right, let's do that. Clear. Uh, tools front and enter tool three. Enter. Okay, so we want to be at our our one inch. Okay, and then we're gonna go. You know what? I'm I'm gonna get a chance to recut the bottom of that groove a little bit too. So I'm gonna slow it down just slightly. Um, so, we're, so what is that? That is should be 395. Yeah, okay. And we will 101 deep before. So we're going to go 111 this time. Touch that thread relief as well because now I got a little there's a little step right there okay now before I forget I got to face 10,000 so for that all right let's go back to tool one where is mr. tool one there he is
okay, well, we recovered from a little boo-boo, and uh, so now I'm going to poke a hole through that and then clean up that thread relief, and then we're going to chop this sucker off. All right, let's poke a hole in this thing. Okay, that's going to help me uh, center this thing up uh, when I turn it around. Let's. Pop a little uh, chamfer on this edge here. And when you do a chamfer on a uh, on a hexagon, what you want is you want that chamfer just to, just to come into the flat and then that's it. You don't want to overdo it or else it looks weird. Okay, you see how they're extending in and when those just meet in the middle. this off and um, and then rechuck it and then we're going to tap the opposite side for this other strange thread that we're doing. Okay so getting ready to part off here and I'm just going to calibrate the tool against this edge. I'm going to part it off a little bit long and um, now I want to be sure to back out. Uh, I'm going to part it off a little bit long, that way I can face the other side. So my number is 315 thousandths. So let's, uh, let's do 350. That's probably good. So it's interrupted cut, so it's kind of... Noisy, it'll quiet down in a second. There you go. the plug and you see it's not the nicest finish there so we'll rechuck that and face that off and chamfer it and uh, and then tap it so all right let's rechuck this thing um, so we're gonna use uh, our new gauge pins here so 
So here's another use of the gauge pin. So we were working this way. Well, now we want to work this way. So I'm going to, this is a gauge pin that fits this really nice, right? So I'm just going to chuck this in the chuck and then I'm going to install that in the jaws and that'll be pretty close to square. So let's uh, see how my theory, uh, my theory looks here. Get enough pin in the, uh, in the, in the chucky. Actually, I should probably wipe those out a little bit. All right, and that hex just came out of there, so. All right, and now I'm going in pretty good. I want to just, well, let's see. What do I want there? Yeah, that looks like enough for the chamfer and everything. Okay, so I'm just gonna clamp down on that. Just for fun, let me grab an indicator and we'll just indicate that and see how good that is. Touching? No. Okay, so that's, I don't know, two thousandths on a rough parted surface. That's pretty good. So that's another use for um, um, for the gauge pins. Uh, it's just a, just a handy, handy thing, and uh, the more you think about them, the more you can uh, um, figure out ways to use them. So they're just wonderful. Alright, so let's get a basing cut here. sign there. Point three four oops. Come on. Point three four zero negative enter. Okay. So now I'm going the right way.
Okay, so I'm going to chamfer that hole a little bit, and then uh, we're going to get ready for our our 1 8 28 BSPT. <laughs> All right, let me get a, a tap wrench and some other gear, and I'll be right back. All right, let's put a little, a little kiss on that edge there. Start with that. And then I'm just putting a guide point in here. This is the guide point I'm going to use. And all that's doing is just uh, centering up this tap here. I just want to make sure I got enough room for swing. Now, one problem I have is I don't have a thread gauge or a fitting um, to check this thread. So what I'm going to do, since <laughs> I'm not expecting to have to tap this thread again, is I'm going to tap it part way uh, and probably kind of aim for coming up a little short and then I'm going to send the tap with it so if Nick needs to uh, um, Tap that a little deeper, he'll have the tool to do that. Okay. And Nick, if you have a tap, tell me because then I'll just keep this one here and then I'll have it and never use it again, probably. <laughs> this is this eighth twenty-eight. Alright. Let's see what that looks like. Let's give it another couple of licks there. All right, and I think I'm going to call that quits. Okay. All right, what's left? A uh, little chamfer, a little chamfer action. Looks like I got to move it out a little bit uh, if I had to. Eh, maybe not. If I just come in really close to the uh, to the jaw there, I'll uh, I'll be able to get it. <laughs> That's what I'll do. So. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use my DRO once again, and um, so I know where that tool tip is, and uh, we use this to set it off a couple of thousandths. Alright, so I know where that is. Let's uh, zero that, and I'm going to back up couple from that. And I'm just giving it a safety spin here to make sure that the, there isn't a jaw that's high or anything like that. And so now I'm just going to feed in this direction to create the chamfer. At least that's the theory. Yeah, see that's not working because it's leaving a little step there, so it looks like I got to pull it out a little bit to uh, um, to get it that uh, to get that full edge there. So okay, all right, we have the technology; we can do that. All right, I'm just going to move it out, and I'm going to chamfer that thing. 
Okay, so I think we're at the end of the line on this thing. Um, this is Nick's plug here. Okay, and I didn't I didn't mill the hex down and make it smaller. Um, he said he had plenty of room on the lid, and that's a lot of work to go around that. And then there's the uh, there's the O-ring there. Okay, a little face groove. Okay, and it's proud from the surface. So we actually we got a little bit of a workout on this one here. You know, this innocent looking plug turns out to be uh, kind of a, um, well, it's an odd thread for me at least. And uh, there's the sketch of the, of the part, uh, our 3 quarter 26 BSB, and then we got our 828 uh, uh, British Standard uh, uh, pipe tap. And so, and then there's our thread form. So we got all kinds of charts we were using for this one. Um, this tells the... Uh, uh, the different diameters here, uh, the depth of thread, the radiuses, etc., uh, etc., et and then this was oh, this is the uh, um, the face uh, the O-ring uh, groove chart here. So this was a eighth inch cross section, and there's our gland depth and uh, the actual percent squeeze here, and uh, and then uh, the groove width here. So. Um, all right. Anyway, uh, all right, Nick. Well, uh, we'll get this uh, boxed up and in the mail to you. And um, I hope you uh, shoot a little video of uh, screwing this thing in. And uh, in the next couple of days, if you uh, shoot me an email, let me know uh, um, if you have that tap. Um, if you have that tap, I'll keep the tap up here, and uh, and then I have it if uh, if you need another one for some reason. So. Okay, anyway, kind of a fun project and, uh, um, you know, simple once you have all the tooling. Okay, so we had to kind of go around and around a little bit with tooling on this one and, uh, uh, and then determining what the actual thread was. So, okay, so anyway, thanks for watching, guys, and uh, I had fun, so I hope you enjoyed watching it.